Welcome, my friends, to this video about PC building. Specifically, if one desires to build a gaming PC, how? Well, whether you are but a learner or an enlightened master of the PC gaming race, first you must bust out that wallet and figure out your budget, and then you must choose your parts. This video is about these two foundational steps on the road to PC gaming bliss, and to guide you on that path, we have a three-level approach, beginner, intermediate, and expert. So follow along and let me know in the comments what level you see yourself at when it comes to picking the right parts for your build. So if you're going to build a PC, you will need all the necessary parts, and I usually list seven core components for a gaming PC, and that's not including other setup items like a monitor, keyboard, and mouse. For the desktop PC itself, there's a CPU or processor, memory, the motherboard, a graphics card, storage, which includes SSDs and hard drives, a case, and a power supply. So let us begin with level one. A competent level one builder will primarily focus on basic compatibility and staying within budget. If you're a beginner, you're most concerned about the basics. Will it work? And can I afford it? So here's the gaming PC I've been directing budget builders towards for a few months now, and things haven't changed too much since I talked about this in the past couple weeks. So we're gonna stick with this build, although I have updated it slightly for this video. We're looking at a total price for the core PC of around $900, so that is the budget that I'm recommending for entry-level builders. And yes, you can absolutely build a gaming PC for less money than this, but in my opinion, there's not a whole lot of point in building a gaming PC and spending the extra money that you need to do in order to do that if you're gonna be cutting costs so much that you're not actually getting better performance than, say, console gaming. So as mentioned in that video I did a couple weeks back, this is the PC component of a complete setup for around $1,250 that includes a monitor a keyboard and a mouse. But I did break out a pie chart here so you can kind of see which percentage of the budget is going where. Most of it is going towards the graphics card, about 45% in this case, with only about 15% going to the CPU. Then we have the rest of our components taking up the remaining 40% or so. Since we're focusing on budget builders here, we've taken a few steps to cut costs. One is that we're going with a previous generation CPU in the Ryzen 5 5600. This is on AMD's AM4 platform. They do have a new platform called AM5 that launched at the end of 2020. And yes, the new platform is faster, but it's also more expensive. By sticking with AM4, we can save a good amount of money, and we still have a good upgrade path if we wanted to upgrade the CPU down the line, because one of the best CPUs for gaming still right now, even in light of the new platforms that have launched, is the 5800X 3D, which you can totally drop into this build. So apart from the CPU, which it should be able to find for $130 to $140, right now you can get it for $130 with a promo code over on Newegg. You will of course need that AM4 motherboard and I have a few listed in the description. This is the least expensive one that I think is reasonable right now. It's again down to 120 with a promo code. For our memory kit, I'm recommending a 16 gig configuration at bare minimum. And this is one of the first things I would upgrade, which we're gonna talk about when we get to level two. Speaking of upgrades though, here is a decent upgrade to that. For 80 bucks, you can go from 16 gigs to 32. And then of course there is that graphics card debate. There's always a question when you're looking at PC components of should I spend just a little bit more to get a bit more performance? Performance. And when I recommended the RTX 3060 12 gig on the NVIDIA side or the RX 6700 XT on the AMD Radeon side, which you can find both of for around $350 to $370 right now, a lot of people said, you know what, it's probably worth it to spend about $400-ish on a 3060 Ti. So that's what I've included today. This card is going to trade blows with the 6700 XT, so if you are more interested in raw performance, I'd say opt towards that. You can save a few bucks. But since NVIDIA tends to be the more popular choice right now, even though they're graphics cards can be on the pricier side, I went with this one for today. And case in point, here's a 3060 12 gig for about 360. Here's another 3060 12 gig for about 370. And then again, over on the AMD side, we have 6700 XTs, uh, which you can find for about 350 bucks right now. Of course, since I'm recommending the upgrade to the 3060 Ti, why not upgrade from the 6700 XT? The step up from there will be the 6750 XT, which you can find for close to $400, about 410 right now. You do get a couple free games, and this is gonna give you maybe eight to 10% more performance than the 6700. 700 XT. But like I said, the question of upgrading a little bit for a little bit more performance is something that you can just keep doing with PC building to stick within our budget, which I forgot to update this, is 891 with the 3060 Ti included for $400. We're not gonna go up too much further from there. 
Again, the remaining parts for a case, you should be able to find a reasonable full-featured full-size ATX case for around $70. You're looking for one that has good airflow and that includes fans. A case side panel window might be nice as well, and something that you appreciate the aesthetics of is also good to go with. The Focus 2 is a popular one in this range, and it's currently back order, but it sh they should have more in stock soon. You're gonna need some storage, and here's where you can find some really great deals on storage that's much faster than a typical SATA drive. The Kingston NV2 is not the fastest NVMe SSD. It does not have a dedicated DRAM cache, which people like to point out in the comments every time I recommend this drive. That said, it's only $51 for one terabyte one. And in terms of PC gaming performance, this isn't gonna affect your gaming performance at all. It's a slight impact on load times is all. Rounding things out, we need a power supply. Power supply prices have gone up a little bit just recently, but here's a 700 watt model for about $75. And that is the level one build. All parts that are compatible, all parts that will give you a really solid gaming experience, especially if you pair it with a nice gaming monitor. And again, all parts that are sticking within a budget of around $900 for the core components of the system. But let's move on up to level two. The level two builder will wisely consider the full setup surrounding the gaming PC and key upgrades that might be worth investing in. It's not just about the PC itself. If you want an excellent PC gaming experience, allocate at least two to $300 of your budget for an entry level gaming monitor. And it's nice to say that in 2023, that amount of money will get you a lot in terms of specs for a gaming monitor, a 27 inch sized, 2560 by 1440 resolution monitor with at least a 144 hertz refresh rate as well as variable refresh rate support via FreeSync and or G-Sync compatibility. And that will mean smooth frame rates for you while gaming even if your GPU dips below 144 frames per second to match that 144 hertz plus refresh rate. I have a few good examples of those gaming monitors here. And again, this will seem familiar to any of you who watched my video just a couple weeks ago. But here for only $210 is an HP gaming monitor that matches all of those requirements, 27 inch, 2560 by 1440. It is a 2021 model, but you really can't beat that price. This one even has a better than 144 Hertz refresh rate up to 165 Hertz. And it is AMD FreeSync Premium certified for variable refresh rate, which means it will also work with Nvidia graphics cards because any monitor that supports AMD FreeSync will also be G-Sync compatible. Here's another good potential gaming monitor uh, to $270. And this one's actually been discounted down from $300 just recently. It's 170 Hertz, 1440p, same resolution, includes a KVM switch, which can be convenient. And again, FreeSync premium support, which means G-Sync will work as well. It is also an IPS panel. I would say stick with an IPS or VA panel. There are TN or twisted pneumatic panels out there as well, which can hit higher refresh rates like 240 Hertz. But if you want good color depth as well, I'd say go with the IPS or VA. Then here was my third recommendation. Uh, this one had actually bounced up in price when I checked it last night, but it's back down again to $247. This one's from LG, part of their Ultra Gear lineup, 144 Hertz refresh rate, really good response time on this one, as well as good color depth. And again, this one has NVIDIA G-Sync as well as AMD FreeSync premium support. Now, just like with graphics cards and other components, with a monitor, you might look at something, be almost decided on making a purchase and then be like, well, what if I spent just a few dollars more? So just to show an example of that, we have the Gigabyte M34WQ, which is a 34 inch ultra wide. So it's actually more horizontal resolution 3440 instead of 2560, but the same vertical resolution of 1440. This one's only $420. So you're looking about 150 to 100, $180 premium over those other monitors we looked at, but the ultra wide experience is quite nice. Now, other than considering the gaming monitor that you're using, the resolution, the refresh rate, and making sure you have a graphics card that will be able to push good frame rates at that resolution, the level two gamer will also look at that level one gamer setup and be like, what are some key upgrades I could make here to give myself a better experience without spending too much money? My recommendation looking at the level one build is absolutely to upgrade the memory first of all, go from 16 gigs to a 32 gig kit. 16 gigs is functional for gaming right now, but it is something that's starting to get a little bit more outdated. Of course, you can always add more storage, more storage for gaming if you especially have a massive Steam library or something like that. You can, of course, look at higher end graphics cards, but bear in mind that as you go upwards in the graphics card stack beyond something like a 6700 XT or an RTX 3060, you might also start to consider upgrading your CPU. And again, the best CPU for gaming that you can slot into this particular system will be the 5800X3D. That one's currently selling for about $330, so about a $200 
$100 premium over this one. But the level two gamer might also consider things like an upgrade path and future compatibility support. And for that reason, AMD's AM4 platform might start to look a little bit less appealing because it is a dead end platform. There aren't gonna be future CPUs launched for it. AM5 should have support through 2025. So investing in that platform might give you longer legs in terms of finding upgrades down the line. So I went from our build one setup just shy of $900 to our build two setup. And we are adding a pretty good amount of money, about $400 in terms of price, but we're upgrading several things. First, we're going with the Ryzen 7 7700X CPU. That is an eight core CPU instead of a six core. And it's also the next generation versus the 5000 series. So it's gonna give you better performance both in gaming as well as in productivity tasks. These X series CPUs don't ship with coolers though. So a level two builder will probably opt for a decent quality air cooler. Yes, liquid cooling is nice, but it also introduces potential points of failure and it doesn't improve your performance that much versus a solid air cooler. So around 40 to $50 for an air cooler. And for that, I've chosen the Deepcool AK500. For our graphics card, I've stuck with the 3060 Ti to keep the budget somewhat more reasonable. Although with the 7700X, which is one of the top CPUs for gaming right now, you could easily upgrade this to a 3070, a 3080 or beyond. Just keep an eye on your power supply if you're upgrading your graphics card. A GPU will typically have a recommended power supply at minimum, and you wanna make sure you have at least that for whatever GPU you're planning to upgrade to. We've also increased our memory capacity by going with a 32 gig kit here, but we're also paying more because it's DDR5 memory instead of DDR4. Fortunately, DDR5 prices have dropped a lot, but still $138 is more than you would pay for a comparable DDR4 kit. Motherboards on the new platform are also quite expensive, even for just sort of a basic functionality one. The Gigabyte B650 Aorus Elite meets those requirements, but it still costs 230. Beyond that, the rest of the components, you can stick with pretty much the same ones. Although again, consider upgrading your PSU if you want to upgrade your graphics card too. That brings our total to $1,314, and that's not including your monitor, your keyboard and mouse, or other components that you might need. So a full setup with this build is probably gonna get more towards the $1,700 range. So if you really are trying to stick to a budget, I'd say opt for the level one build and maybe do a few of those key upgrades that I recommended along the way. By the way, I also dropped all my level two build hardware into PC Part Picker, which is a website where you can choose parts and find retailers to buy them from. With the 7700X, the AK500, the Gigabyte B650 Aorus Elites, G-Skill Flare X5 memory kit. And this is another nice thing to go for. The newer memory kits that are designed specifically for AM5 will have Expo settings, which are actually much better to use with the AMD Ryzen 7000 series CPUs than memory that ships with Intel XMP settings. There are a few prices in here that aren't quite accurate, like the Kingston NV2 can be found for $51, but the stock is sort of shaky, which is why they're offering it from Newegg, which is selling it for quite a bit more than that. But we still have that $400 graphics card, that 70-ish dollar case. And again, this power supply should be available for about 10 bucks cheaper, but we're still in the $1,300 to $1,400 range total. And then we get to level three. And for level three, I have to kind of split the gap here because for one, for level three, let's just face it, you're gonna need more money. The level three components tend to cost a lot more because we're looking at higher end components that have more performance. We're also looking at a lot of extras, aesthetic features. The level three builder will look at really high end, nice RGB filled builds like I have done here on my channel. And they'll be like, that's what I want. And if you have the money for something like that, cause we're looking at probably four to $5,000 plus for the core components of the system, then absolutely you should go for it. There is a class of level three builders who might opt to not actually build and just spend their exorbitant amounts of money on a pre-built from a quality pre-built manufacturer like say Origin PC or Main Gear. But if you want that premium PC gaming experience, if you want that build that looks like a half PC, half art project slash RGB Inferno, and of course, if you have the money to afford it and the patience to go through the build process, which a lot of people like doing because it also gives you the confidence to perhaps go in and perform maintenance or repairs on that build in the future, then you fall into that category of the level three builder. But here, it's beyond just compatibility and potential upgrades. We're looking for a complete system that matches is aesthetically, and in particular, when it comes to the aesthetic icing on the cake for PC building, which is RGB lighting, making sure you have an RGB lighting setup that is configurable without having crazy amounts of software installed is a good thing to think about from the beginning for the level three builder. 
Here's the build I've come up with. It is around five to $6,000, although again, the prices can vary somewhat. I've been giving AMD a lot of love in this video so far, so I've gone with an Intel build here with the 13900K. Yes, there is now a 13900KS, which you can buy for $100 to $150 more than this. So even with this really high-end build, there are ways you could still spend more money if you wanted to. That said, a 13900K is in the top three in terms of uh, gaming CPUs right now, so it's totally a good solution. And yes, if you were leaning towards an AMD build on AM5, uh, the CPU you'd probably want to opt for here is the 7950X3D, but that doesn't launch until February 28th. So who knows, perhaps I will do a slight variation of this build when I actually go through with building a few of these systems, which I intend to do over the course of this month with some new how to build tutorials. But if you look at this list, you might notice a few more than the core seven or so components that I originally chose. Our CPU needs a cooler, of course, because the K SKUs and the X SKUs from uh, Intel and AMD don't come with coolers these days. And if you want both peak performance as well as peak cost, uh, going with an all-in-one liquid cooler is a good choice, but those can get pricey, $200 to $300. And part of the reason this one is more pricey is because it has an LCD panel on the pump block. Do you need that? Does it improve your performance? No. It doesn't, it's aesthetic. But it is something that people are apparently willing to pay, you know, close to $300 for. Likewise, our motherboard is an Asus ROG Strix motherboard that costs $500. You could easily get away with a still very high-end motherboard for one to $200 cheaper than this, but will it have our, all the RGB elements that you want? Will it sync up nicely with the graphics card you've chosen, which is also Asus? Will it work together with like the Corsair IQ software, where Asus and Corsair have worked pretty closely together to make sure that their RGB lights on their components can be controlled by the other company's software? And of course, does it have, again, the functional things like really good power delivery for overclocking, as well as tons of expansion M.2 slots, and nice ease of use features like surface mounted power and reset buttons or a debug LED. So those are the selling points and the reason someone might spend 500 bucks on a motherboard. Would I do that personally? Probably not. I'd probably, like I said, recommend people get like a 300-ish dollar motherboard, but sometimes it's fun to pretend like we have unlimited money. Speaking of unlimited money, we have a 64 gig memory kit, DDR5-6200 in this case. It's gonna cost about $440 for both of those. I added more storage. We have a really nice WD Black SN850X, which is a PCI Gen 4x4 NVMe SSD, one of the fastest Gen 4 drives that are out there, as well as two Crucial P3 Gen 3 drives, which are still very fast in and of themselves, so you get six terabytes of NVMe SSD storage. I'm again trying to stick to an ecosystem that I know works in terms of lighting control. So I've got the Corsair all-in-one liquid cooler, Corsair Dominator memory, and we've also got a Corsair IQ7000X RGB case. And what the heck, might as well go with the Corsair HX1200 Platinum rated 1200 watt power supply. This is another place where a level three builder might add some more components. The AIO that we chose has three fans included. This case has three fans in the front and one in the rear, but it's got space for three more. So you could add some more Corsair fans here. Again, that would cost you probably $70 to $100 depending on the fans that you went with. And I, the case is out of stock on Newegg, but it's available at uh, Corsair and Amazon. Lastly, I wanted to mention this graphics card. The RTX 4090 is pretty much the best graphics card that you can get right now for a PC gaming system. And they should cost, well, I mean, they should cost like sixteen to seventeen hundred dollars because that's what the MSRP is. Asus wants like a thousand dollars for these, but uh, they're currently out of stock in a lot of places. So Amazon Marketplace seller is selling it for six hundred dollar markup. I wouldn't recommend buying it there. But that is why the total price here is uh, a bit more than it should be. You could actually get this setup for a little bit under five k if you shopped around to make sure you were getting good prices. It didn't pay the third-party marketplace markup. So just to run the full gamut with my pie charts, here's the pie chart for that high-end build. Again, around $5,000, $5,500. ,005, and a big chunk of that is that graphics card around 45 to 50%. But again, note here that we're paying a lot of extra money for stuff that is not necessarily gonna get us better performance in a lot of cases. We're paying for RGB compatibility. We're paying for components that fit within a certain family of products where you might have alternatives that could give you equal performance in terms of gaming, but might not match quite as well or might not have the RGB lighting control that you're looking for. If you want my professional opinion, I would point most people towards something between that level one build and the level two build right now. It's still a pretty big jump up in price with not a whole lot of difference in performance to go with the new platform like AM5 and to upgrade your memory to DDR5 and everything that goes along with that. And there still is a lot of performance available on the AM4 platform, especially when you consider the potential upgrade to the 5800X3D. But part of the reason I wanted to lay out my monthly build series for
for this month, which this video is part of, is to provide a little bit of a contrast in terms of both the build experience, the costs, as well as the ultimate performance you get out of going with something that sticks to a budget closer to $1,000 versus going all out and spending three, four, five thousand dollars or more. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I will be doing two builds this month or throughout the course of February and possibly early March. I'm gonna build that budget system with a tutorial for beginners, and then I'm gonna build the high-end system to provide a contrast to all the extra steps you need to go through, especially to connect up all the RGB lighting. And hopefully that series that I have in the works, as well as this video, will help you make a wise decision in terms of what you want to invest your money in if you want to get into PC gaming in 2023. But that's all I have for today. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Closing things to say, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video for sure. Check out my store at paulsharbor.net where you can buy shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and more. We have a sale going on on hoodies right now. And of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel because I have more videos coming out really soon, including a new set of tutorials for how to build a gaming PC. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next one.